So we've now introduced the notion of a root system, which is a finite set R in Rn, and it satisfies a bunch of axioms, and those axioms are supposed to encapsulate what it means to be the root diagram of a semi-simple compact Lie group. So let's quickly recap what the axioms say. If alpha is a root, then minus alpha is a root. Over here you can see the root diagram of SU3, um, which is our sort of prototypical root diagram, and certainly every root has an opposite root. Second, if I take two roots, alpha and beta, and I project beta orthogonally onto the line through alpha, like this, then I end up with a half integer multiple of alpha. So a half n alpha beta times alpha. So n alpha beta is an integer associated to alpha and beta. Number three, um, the root system is symmetric under reflections in the root hyperplanes. So in this diagram, those are these red lines. These are the hyperplanes orthogonal to the roots. So I'm going to call the hyperplane orthogonal to alpha, pi alpha. And finally, um, if I take the line through alpha, then the only roots that's going to hit are alpha and minus alpha, and nothing else. Okay, it turns out these axioms are very good at encapsulating what it means to be the root diagram of a compact semi-simple group, because there's a theorem which says every root system, in this sense, is the root diagram of a compact semi-simple Lie group. And moreover, the root diagram or the root system determines the Lie algebra of that group up to isomorphism. So it doesn't determine the group up to isomorphism, it determines the Lie algebra up to isomorphism. For example, SU2 and SO3 we've seen have isomorphic Lie algebras, but they're not isomorphic as groups. So they'll have the same root diagram. So I'm not going to prove this theorem, it's it's too hard and we've not got time left in the course, um, but you can do an in-depth project if you want on this. Instead I'm going to classify the possible root systems um, up to sort of isometry and uh, so that together with this theorem will give us a classification of the uh, Lie algebras of compact semi-simple groups. So in this video, I'll give a sketch of how this is supposed to go, and in any remaining videos, I will fill in at least some of the details. Okay, so here's how we're gonna approach the classification of root systems. First of all, let's just look at this example. Um, notice that if I want to understand all six roots, all I really need to understand is what's happening in this region I'm shading in blue, which is like a triangular wedge of the plane um, containing this root alpha and bounded by these two red rays. So what are these rays? Well, this guy, this horizontal guy is orthogonal to the root beta. So this is uh, pi beta. And this other ray here is orthogonal to the root phi. So this is uh, pi phi. So in other words, really to understand the whole root system, I can get away with understanding the region of the root system between these two lines. So this is called a vial chamber. And the point is that if I take one vial chamber and I act using the vial group and take all its images, then I'm going to fill the whole space, the whole plane. So notice that this vial chamber is cut out by two of the root hyperplanes. I don't need all three. So this is cut out by a subset of the root hyperplanes. So to be more precise, the way that I did this was I picked a line of irrational slope 
which I'll draw in green. Um, if you remember, that was uh, a line passing through the origin and no other points of the weight lattice. In general, this would be a hyperplane rather than a line in high dimensions. And that divides my roots into negative roots on the left-hand side and positive roots on the right-hand side. So alpha, beta, and phi are the positive roots in this for this particular choice of green line. And now this is actually enough to pick out a vial chamber and to tell me which two root hyperplanes I'm, or which subset of the root hyperplanes I'm looking at, and also to label them by roots. So I, I you know, this pi b is also orthogonal to uh, epsilon, right? Because epsilon and b are collinear, but I'm just choosing to label it by the positive root beta. So um, this gives us a subset um, of the roots, in this case beta and phi, called the simple roots. So I'll discuss these in, in more detail later. But for now, the simple roots are just a subset of the roots whose uh, corresponding hyperplanes cut out the vial chamber that we're interested in. A different choice of line or hyperplane of irrational slope would give us a different set of simple roots, but we'll assume we've fixed such a choice. So first claim, which I will defer the proof until a later video, is that uh, the number of simple roots, having made this choice, is equal to the dimension of the space Rn that we're working in. So the number of, number of simple roots is n. In this case n is 2 because it's the plane, so there's two simple roots. Moreover, um, if uh, you know beta and phi are simple roots, then beta dot phi is negative. So you can see that in this example if I dot beta and phi I'm basically taking the it's a vertical component of phi, which is negative. And remember, this dot product is coming from the killing form. That's, you know, this, this is all happening inside Rn, but remember, Rn is really something coming from Lie theory, which inherits its geometry from the killing form. Okay, so I want to think of the boundary of the vial chamber, so these two red rays, pi beta and pi phi, as mirrors literally mirrors, right? Because we can reflect in them to get symmetries of the diagram. But you can imagine the whole diagram would appear if you just had two mirrors in the plane and you put a point here and you looked into this vial chamber from over here. That's supposed to be an eye. And you look at the vial chamber. Um, what you'll see is the reflections of this point in these in these two mirrors. Okay. So here's an example to show you what I'm talking about. Here are three mirrors in three dimensions. And I've put a pencil sharpener in the middle of the cone formed by these three mirrors. And of course, what you see is not just a pencil sharpener. You see its reflections in the three mirrors and its reflections in the reflections of those mirrors, etc., etc. And in total, what you see is a root system. So this is the root system. Uh, corresponding to SU4 or the uh, SL4C. So just as with the hexagon, the important thing is the angles between the mirrors. So in the hexagon, the angle between two of the uh, mirrors was 60 degrees, right? The vial chamber subtended 60 degrees at the plane. Here, the angle between these two mirrors is 60 degrees. The angle between these two mirrors is 60 degrees. And the angle between these two mirrors is actually 90 degrees. And that's what gives me precisely the root system of SU4. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what are the possible angles between mirrors that you can have for root systems?